be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this um, almost middle day of May. What? What? I know. It's crazy. I don't know what time it is or where I am in the calendar, but I am glad to be gathered here with you here in the sanctuary and with folks at home or however you are connecting with us. We're just grateful for that. Um, thank you to Larry Petrick for being our liturgist this morning. And thank you to Carl Reekers for running the audio and visual and streaming and all the good things that, that keep us connected in all kinds of ways. Um, I need more liturgists. So if anybody wants to be a liturgist, let me know. Uh, I don't think I have anybody signed up after Larry, so next Sunday. Oh, oh okay, okay, hired. <laughs> There's not even, it's not even difficult. It's not even difficult. No job interview, any of that. Um, today is the last day of Sunday school. Uh, it has been just a terrific um, half year since January. So, um, so much fun. Thanks to everybody. Who are our teachers this unit? Daniel Reekers and Jonathan Walsh and Emily Walsh and no, yeah. Sue Dibner. She yeah. subbed and then Sue Dibner. Okay. Okay, so thanks to everyone, and, and we've also had the Os Shane, Shane Osterman has also taught, and Julia yeah, helps yeah. with music, and so thanks to everybody who's been, Christy. and Christy, that's right, Christy, Christy Carwell Clark, grateful for everybody for, and, um, and parents who bring children, so thank you all for making it possible. Uh, but while we're done with Sunday school, we continue forward to Vacation Bible School, God's good creation that we are doing together with the Methodists across the street and Seeds of Faith out at Seeds of Faith. The week of June 26th, Sunday to Thursday, 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we are excited about it. It's going to be so much fun. So um, grandchildren, other children you know, are welcome. So come on and do it. Um, new member class. Today we are, um, if you are interested, we, we, we had several people show up on, on May 1st. We're going to continue today. If it's something you're thinking about and you want to know more, come see me. It's in the community room, which is hallway there, that direction. Uh, <clears throat> by the elevator. By the elevator. Thank you, Beth. Uh, and that will we'll start about 11 o'clock. Today we are learning about... Presbyterians. <laughs> what are Presbyterians? <laughs> Why are they called Presbyterians? All the things. Yeah, so maybe you're curious about that and you don't even care about the new members class, but you want to know, what is a Presbyterian? Come join us. Come join us. And then I believe we have fellowship time today because the children are making marshmallow crispy treats, or are they not? They are not. There might be some coffee, so we can talk with one another downstairs. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, um, we have a ladies' night out on Thursday, May 26th. That's 6 o'clock p.m. We are going to meet at the Bluebird Cafe in Solon, not in North Liberty, <laughs> in Solon. It's on Main Street. Um, if you know where the Salt Fork Kitchen was, may the Salt Fork rest in peace. That is where it is. And so that's going to be fun, and hope you can join us for that. Those are all the announcements I have. Am I forgetting anything? <laughs> Don't forget to say hi. <laughs> it is all about community here. Yeah, that's exactly right. Love it. That's it. You got it. You got it. It's all about connecting with other people, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay, I haven't forgotten any announcements. Well then, I invite, oh, oh, I did forget one. Marissa Cranston is down in the nursery. Marissa is back from UNI for the summer and well, maybe the fall. She's waiting to find out about student teaching. And so she is down in the nursery. Um, I was gonna call her a prodigal daughter, but it's not really prodigal daughter situation at all. <laughs> She's just back, and we're glad. So you can also just go say hi to Marissa if you if you'd like to. Um, but yeah, so parents, feel free to, to head down there 
Or we love your kids in worship too, so no worries. Okay. So I invite us all to take a moment and take a deep breath. And remember, as you do that, well, let's do a little check. Are your shoulders tight? Is your jaw clenched? Can you move your head a little bit? Can you rotate your shoulders, get some loose, get some, get some breath all the way down, all the way down? And we remember, we talk a lot about... Um, the creation story of God taking the clay, essentially, the soil of the earth and forming a human being and breathing life into our nostrils. But also this, one of the stories of Easter, of Jesus appearing, the risen Christ appearing to the disciples in the upper room on the, that first Easter day when they were huddled and afraid and did not know what was going to happen next. And he breathed on them to give them peace, to give them the Holy Spirit. So I invite you to take a few breaths, a few more breaths, not to, and to think about this throughout the week, that God is as close to us as breath. God is there to sustain us, to give us life, to make us whole, and to remind us of our connection to one another. So with that renewed awareness, let us continue our worship of God together. I invite you all to stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. O oh God, we joyously come together to worship, realizing we need not summon you into our midst, for you are here. We need, we need not, not call, call you into the, the secret places of our hearts, for you are there. there. We need our eyes of faith to be open, that we may see you. Our ears to be unstopped, that we may hear you. Our minds to be sensitive, that we may know you. Our hearts to be tender, that we may receive you. Grant each one a blessing, O Lord, so that each has need. As we, As we worship, worship you together. together. 
Now, friends, we'll sing together uh, number, hymn number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth. Let us confess the ways we have fallen short of God's intention for us. Let us pray together. Gracious, Gracious source of life, in this season of growth and renewal, we sometimes remain stuck in dormancy, refusing to see or accept the new growth within and around us. We confess that we turn our eyes away from the beauty of this world and do not always acknowledge the love and mercy offered to us each day. We cling to bad news, are afraid to risk, to reach out or to turn the corner, for then we may no longer pity ourselves. We are busy with our own tasks to see if they fit into your desires for us and the world. Forgive us, us, O God, God, for all, all the ways we are held captive by complacency, inertia, and fear. Help us to see and accept your gift of resurrection. Amen. As Christ broke into the disciples' locked room, offering forgiveness and the breath of new life, so Christ can enter our closed hearts and minds and give us new life. Know that you are forgiven for the breath of the, the resurrection creating you anew. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. Amen. Amen. Let's sing You Are Holy, hymn number 596. <laughs> Thank you. 
joyful presence of our risen Lord, let us give one another a sign of peace. The peace of Christ be with each of you. And also with you. Discovery time, if you would stew. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. All right, okay, Ellie, I'm, I'm going to scoot over this side. Apparently, we have the girls' side and the boys' side too. Hello, well, hello, good morning. There we go. That's right. That's right. Sorry about that. Yes, it is. All the children are up here. So, my friends, I brought visual aids today. Ugh. Ugh. Bibles. So, I don't know why I'm starting on the bottom. So, this <laughs> is a very impressive Bible, isn't it? This is a, pulp, a, a lectern Bible or a pulpit Bible. It's nice and big. You can see how big the print is, right? It's, 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 uh, it's to... Um, I think technically we're supposed to read from it on Sunday mornings, but we we always print um, some of the scripture in the in the bulletin, so we haven't been using it. Sorry, PCUSA. Um, <laughs> but it's very impressive, isn't it? It has you see the side. It's gilt, <coughs> gold. I mean, it's not really gold, but it's it's gold um, gold edges, and it's got it's got ribbons here, so you can put what you. Mark the pages that you're, you're reading. Okay. This is um, a children's, children of God storybook Bible. This is, we're, we're giving these to families now. Well, we gave, um, I think we need to get you one, Connor, because you guys weren't coming here yet. Jonathan, we need to get. Got it. <laughs> yep. Um, we, we gave these out to families in the fall. And uh, it's, it's an awesome it's an awesome book. The, the pictures, they've got all these different illustrators, and they come from different parts of the world, and so it's just, it's just beautiful, and it's, um, the stories are retold by Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu, who recently died, but is a great and holy man. He was a, just a really good guy. This is the deep blue Bible that we give to third graders, which we need to give probably to third graders and fourth graders. Um, we got a little behind with the pandemic. You got one. You got, yeah, your class was the last class to get it, and we were about to start a Bible skills class, and then that was in Mar that was in like late February 2020, and then everything changed. So, yeah, so this is the Deep Blue Bible, and it's great. It has study helps, and um, it also has a ribbon, and it has, this is called ventricular, venti I don't know, it's ventricular. You move it and it changes the thing, the cover. So that's cool, right? And then, what do you think about this one? It's interesting. It's duct, <laughs> it's duct taped uh, together because it was wearing out. Because this is, you see, it's like like the cover was falling off. This is also. Well, thank you, thank you, Gara. Yeah, this is the Bible that I um, had in my backpack and carried around with me for three years of seminary. And it was kind of hard on it in the backpack, and, and I don't think the binding was particularly good. So the, the, the cover has ripped off. But, um, you know, it's got marks, and gosh, why aren't, I'm not finding any marks in here, but I swear I marked it. <laughs> I read it a lot. So this, is, so this is my seminary Bible, okay? I really did. See? Look. Behold the duct tape. Okay. So, which of these Bibles, here's your, here's your question. And I'll, I'll tell you ahead of time. Which of these Bibles is the best Bible? Okay, we have one vote for the pulpit Bible. We have one vote for the well-worn Bible. You guys want to weigh in? Oh, Ellie, it's like you're a plant. What, okay, <laughs> yes, they're all important. You know what the most important, the best Bible is? The one that you read. I 
I know, I know. It's kind of almost, yeah. You're reading this one? <laughs> it's, awful, it's awfully heavy, but it's nice big print. Yeah, and, but you can also read this one, because I love this one too. And this one is good too. Um, they're all good. They're all good. And the, the important thing is to read a Bible that helps us to know the stories of the people of God and of Jesus and of people trying to follow and be what lives God wants us to live. So that's the most important thing. But I, I will also give a little shout out that um, now, admittedly, this had a lot of help from a backpack uh, being toted around, but and also a, a bad binding. But a goal might be for each each one of us is to wear out a Bible in our lifetime. How about that? Huh? Okay. So, yeah. Thank you for the show and tell. Are you guys ready for your last day of Sunday school? Yes, that's exciting. We're 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 finishing up, aren't we? And then you got to come to then you got to come to vacation Bible school too. Okay. So let's um. Which one do you want to say? Do you want to say thank you for the world so sweet, or do you want to do the may the Lord watch? You want to do thank you? Okay. Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank, thank you for the world so sweet. sweet. Thank you for the friends we meet. Thank, thank you for the friends we meet. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. All right, friends, you go have fun. Looks like Jonathan's ready for you. longer to move a, that many people in the choir. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll take a moment. Full house. Full house. That's right. Pretty exciting. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. 
and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we are continuing through uh, reading some highlight stories from the book of Acts. We're in the 11th chapter this week, reading verses 1 through 18, and this is Peter's report to the church at Jerusalem about the events uh, in chapter 10. Um, so it's kind of, a, this story is so important, they told it twice. So I invite you now to listen for God's word to you. Now, the apostles and the brothers and sisters who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four cor corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Kassira arrived at the house where they were. The Spirit told me to go to them and not make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angels standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who was called Peter, to speak. So he will give the message by which you will, entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon you in the, at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave to us when he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was it that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given us, even the Gentiles, the repentance that leads to life. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I invite you to pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I love the Bible. I guess it's a kind of a prerequisite for this job, isn't it? It is a library of writings that has arguably had more influence on human history and development than any other. I mean, we really could debate that, but it's certainly the influence has been strong. Um, I find within its pages comfort, discomfort, challenge, beauty, majesty, wisdom, comedy, inspiration, poetry, a framework for thinking and living. Now, too often, the Bible gets treated like a sacred object, something to have and to revere, rather than a book to read and to use. I suspect there are people who would be absolutely appalled by my seminary Bible, and yet I would argue, as you probably know, that's the way a Bible is really supposed to look, <laughs> right? Use it. I found myself thinking um, about the Bible this week. You know, as I, as I talk about every week, it's, an, it's a new set of lenses. And so this week, I was thinking about the Bible as uh, something like a jack-in-the-box. 
you know, the metal box, you turn the crank and then it sings a song and then pop, something comes out. It's a surprise the first time, right? What that, what that is and when it's going to come. And then, you, then you have a total predictability about when it's going to pop. Or maybe it's like a gift box that you have a lid that you just lift off and then something comes out of the box. Maybe, uh, maybe a balloon rising up, right? But, but the point is, it's a, the Bible is also full of surprises. And perhaps it is because uh, it is about the movement of the Holy Spirit throughout the communities of those early disciples that the book of Acts is especially full of surprises. And this week's story is... Um, an excellent example of this. What we have is, it's, it's something like a court scene. Um, it was certainly an inquiry. The parties were all friendly to each other. They were all friends, so there wasn't, there wasn't animosity. Um, but there was consternation. Peter has, had been asked to report to the, to the church in Jerusalem about why, why in the world Peter had eaten with the Gentile, with Gentiles, right? That's the, that's the distinction, and it's one of the big one of the big distinctions was circumcision, uncircumcision. That is, why uh, did he eat and enter the home of someone who was not a Jew? So, so just a quick reminder, because that may be like, well, what is the problem? Why is this an issue? Well, this is still very early in the church. Up until this point, everyone who chose to follow the way of Jesus was Jewish, just like Jesus was Jewish, right? And they followed the traditions and the practices of Judaism because that is how they had been raised, right? That is how they had lived. This is the only life they knew. They kept the Sabbath. They, um, they were certainly circumcised. That they, they, they followed the, the festivals. They followed the dietary and behavior restrictions just like Jesus did. This was an essential part of their identity. In fact, this different way of living, separate and apart, was how the Jewish people maintained their identity, their understanding of who they were. They were always making choices, this, not that, right? And that's how they, that's how they remained the people of God. And in, in, depending on the sect of Judaism, that is, that is still true. Some of the sects of Judaism truly live apart like this, um, and others are somewhere in between. In his actions, by entering the home of a Gentile and eating with them, Peter had transgressed the communal understanding of what was acceptable. So he really did had to explain himself and his actions. He had to tell them what in the world he was thinking, what led him to do this almost unthinkable thing. Uh, so, and just as I said before we did the reading, this is, this is Peter telling from his perspective what happened, which uh, the book of Acts tells in chapter 10. It really is, uh, okay, I'm a Bible geek, but it's worth reading in chapter 10 as well. Okay. So Peter begins by explaining that he had, been he had been praying, he was in prayer, when God sent him a vision three times, and three, that means God really means it. <laughs> if something happens three times, like, okay, no, seriously, right? Um, it sounds odd to us with the sheet and all the animals and God telling Peter to kill and eat, right? That can be kind of off-putting, but you guys, this was really important. It was, um, it was all about what was clean to eat, what was acceptable to eat, what would keep the Jewish people in the right relationship with God, right? And um, Jews demonstrated their love for God by not eating certain foods, including birds of the air and reptiles. Now, when this sheet appeared before Peter with all these animals, he may have thought it was a test, right? When, when the boy said, Peter, get up, kill and eat. So Peter responds, 
no way, I would never do that. I don't eat that food because I've been told not to eat this food and I'm surely not going to start now because I am a good Jew. Right? I am, I am obedient. I'm not going to do that. And every time that same voice responded by saying, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. Right? Three times this happened. Peter is bewildered. It is really not clear to him what in the world this vision refers to until three strangers, three strangers arrive to take Peter with them back to Caesarea. Now Caesarea, he was in Joppa, which is on the coast, and, and Caesarea was about 39 miles north of Joppa. Uh, or, and uh, these strangers are Gentiles. Now it doesn't tell us that they're Gentiles, but I, they were Gentiles. They were sent by a Gentile, and I think Peter would have been able to tell. Maybe because of the way they were dressed, maybe because of the way they spoke. It's like, okay, this is weird, but I can usually tell Europeans by their shoes. I don't know. It's weird. (laughs) Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, you've done the travel, right? Right? I mean, you just, right? Does anybody else do this? I think, okay. Anyway, that's a weird aside. Um, But Peter would have been able to tell, right, that they were not, they are not Jews. (laughs) Um, and uh, it would have been a long trip, 39 miles. That's more than you can walk in a day, right? There were reasons for him to say no, but the Spirit told him to say yes, and so he did. The man who had summoned him, Cornelius, was not only a Gentile, he was a commanding officer in the occupying military. Okay? Talk about other. There were lots of reasons for Peter to not want to have anything to do with him. And yet, the spirit was still at work, giving Peter the courage that he needed, the words to say, to preach to these people, because they wanted the word. They were eager for the word of God. And, uh, and the Spirit also gave Peter the eyes to see what was happening to Cornelius and his household and how that was just what he and his own companions had experienced on that day of Pentecost. Peter says, explained to his friends at the, count, at the council in Jerusalem. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? For Peter, it was crystal clear that God was doing a new, new thing. And then there is this. Acts continues in the next verse, verse 18. When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. I don't know about you, but I am so struck by that. Those who were troubled by what they had heard about what Peter had done responded to Peter recounting the tale with silence. Not a cold, accusing silence of how dare you come to us like that with this lame excuse, this terrible excuse. Rather, they listened. And, and, and it was a discerning silence, right? Rather than doubling down on their certainty about what was right, rather than jumping straight into arguments about how what Peter did was wrong, They made space for God and made space for the possibility that the Spirit was up to something new. They had listened to understand instead of listening to respond with an argument. Right? I think we all know that one a little uh, too intimately. I know I do. It really is an extraordinary story and an extraordinary model for discerning what God may be up to in the world because from that point on, I mean, 
the world to that point, it had been separate, right? There were Jews over here, everybody else over there, we're going to stay over here. But now Gentiles are included too? That just, that opened things up. It opened things up. Willie James Jennings is a theologian and a scholar of liberation theologies and cultural identities. He is also a Baptist, a black man, and on the faculty at Yale Divinity School. And he has written a phenomenal commentary on the book of Acts. And about this passage, he wrote the following. The past, though important, is never the point for the life of faith. The point is the present moment with a living God who is with us, beckoning us to communion. The God who speaks to us now calls us into the risk of hearing a new word, a word that orients us toward the unanticipated and the unprecedented where the reconciling God is active. Peter found himself in the midst of such a word in Acts 11, where what God was doing in and through him among the Gentiles pressed him, body and soul, up against the word God had spoken to his own people, Israel. The key for us, seen in this moment for Peter, is to refuse the binary of naming the past word false and the present word true, or the present word false and the past word true, and to discern through the Spirit the line of continuity between past and present. We may do this because discernment is not a burden, but is the joy we have in participation with the ongoing life of Jesus, who has claimed this space between past and present word as his own and invites us to join him in it. You have heard that it was said, but I say to you, Jesus' words, Point to the present, an intimate speaking of the living God made flesh and one with us in the challenging task of hearing God's new words pressed against the old ones. What does a new word look like? We still know, we we will know it by its fruit, that which builds life together, life abundant, and deepening life in God is truly a new word from God. That which speaks the community of Christ and echoes a desire for shared life, shared hope, and redemption from death and all its agents is always a new word from God. Indeed, an old word registered in the canon of scripture, liturgical tradition, testimony, and dogma can become a new word to us through the Spirit, and a new word found in bodies and through experience, in places strange and alien to us, among peoples not our own, can also become a new word of God to us. Yet these words should never be understood to live antagonistically. They are bound together in the life of a speaking God who wills us to bind together through space and time, through borders and boundaries, from life through death and to the life anew and eternal found in Jesus Christ. I know, I'm a Bible geek, but that's awesome. So I, and I was thinking about all the, all the issues that the big C churches, um, not just our church, not, not always our church, but, but the church is wrestling with or has wrestled with, and in some cases continues to wrestle with. Divorce, abortion, LGBTQ plus ordination, marriage, inclusion in the church, um, the lives of trans people, right? The the lives of Black Lives Matter, vaccinations, sexuality, feminism, gun rights, capitalism and the free market and economic disparity, climate change and the environment, right? These are just a few, we could keep going. Um, we continue to wrestle with these. And and, and what is important to remember is that these aren't just theoretical issues, right? These aren't just policy. These aren't just legislation. These are individual people's lives. These are communities. These are 
connections. How then should we live? How then should we think and act and love our neighbor? Willie James Jennings' words are worth hearing again. What does a new word from God look like? We will know it by its fruit, that which builds life together, life abundant, and deepening life in God is truly a new word from God. That which speaks the community of Christ and echoes a desire for shared life, shared hope, and redemption from death and all its agents is always a new word from God. Friends, may we keep our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our minds open for those new words from God, always seeking to create a world, a community, where life and love and connection and shared hope are abundant. And I know of few hymns that cast that vision, like the one we're about to sing, For Everyone Born of the Spirit, hymn number 769. And we did, um, in our, in our, in our uh, seeking to uh, be more, ever more inclusive and mindful of inclusion, we did um, alter the lyrics somewhat. So you may want to sing from the bulletin. Um, I can't remember which verse it is that's different, but so I invite you to sing from verse, verse three. Thank you. Verse, verse three is different? Okay, maybe verse two and verse three are different. I think verses, um, yeah, f- one, four, and five, if you want to sing out of him, you can do that. Okay. Thoroughly confused? Let's sing. <laughs> Thank you. 
where we share together our joys and concerns, and I do have a few to share with you, and then Larry, here's the... Anybody has one to share from the congregation? Um, so, uh, we've been praying for Walt Hewitt. Uh, Walt and Betty are good friends of Carl and Beth Reekers. They are down in Florida now. Walt has... Um, cirrhosis of the liver it's at end stages um, after his service in, in Vietnam. Um, and he, uh, I'm not sure what that note means, Beth. He's really, it, oh, <laughs> it's incomplete liver failure. I was reading it as incomplete liver failure, which didn't make any sense at all. He is in complete liver failure right now, he's, but, but interestingly, he's been transferred to Gainesville, to a hospital in Gainesville, um, and he's awaiting, if there's a match, there would be still yet be a possibility of a, of, a, of a transplant, of a liver transplant, so it really is just up in the air, <laughs> just up in the air. So for, for Walt and, and um, the medical team and just the whole situation, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, we offer prayers today for the family and friends of Wendy McLean. Um, we had prayed for her last Sunday. She was in the ICU with, uh, with, with um, lung cancer, and she did die last Sunday. Um, sh her mother, Barb, her daughter, Noelle, um, many friends and family. So for, for all those who are grieving her death, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dixie uh, Mackey is asking for prayers for um, her friend Kay's husband, Bob, Bob McGuire. They, um, he has a cancerous mass on his esophagus and two nodules on his lungs. They've identified that this week, and now they are waiting steps of what to do about it. They, they, um, he's, he doesn't want to do chemo, but surgery might be possible, so just for that, Lord in your mercy. Here are for and then prayers for Anne Cannon and her mother Barbara. They are in Germany doing a, um, allowing Barbara to say goodbye to her friends there. I can't remember how many years she's been there, 20, 30 some years, and as before she moves to um, an assisted living facility in Huntington, Pennsylvania, where she had lived before she moved to Germany. So for that whole situation, Lord in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. So do we have other? We're wishing for peace for our seven-year-old grandson, Jack, who missed his last football game of the spring season yesterday because he tested positive for COVID. Oh, that's, oh. And so many people are testing positive for COVID right now. So for Jack and others, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I have a couple. Um, my best friend in Washington, Lisa, and her husband, Mike, had moved his mom in, who has advanced stage Alzheimer's, about the same as my mom. Um, but in their situation, she is so agitated at night that she's only sleeping like maybe 20 or 30 minutes, which makes means they're only sleeping 20 or 30 minutes, which sleep deprivation is such a real thing. Um, and how it affects you, and she's had so many falls now in the middle of the night that for her own safety, they've had to make the hard decision to find a place for her, and they are still awaiting. Um, she's been in the hospital after her last fall, 
so they're they're waiting for a, a bed to open up somewhere that they feel like will be a good place for her but very devastating that's a hard decision no matter if you have them living with you <laughs> or it's just a devastating disease so i'd really appreciate your prayers for them in this transition for the, her her mom and um i also have prayer for my own daughter um she I got a really late night text Friday night that she was in urgent care. My daughter is, I call triple type A personality perfectionist. She's, which makes her great, but it's also the other side of it is that she'd been having stomach pains for about a week and a half, did not tell anybody. Her roommate finally insisted that she go to urgent care. Um, she said, you know, I think I can go tomorrow in between the class in the morning and the shower that we have in the afternoon because that's my daughter. And the roommate said, no, you're going now. And so it turns out she has a pretty bad ulcer. And so helping her learn how to manage grad school and um, all the things without expecting, you know, she's just really hard on herself, which has made her successful, but also... Now she has to, you know, really, really be careful of this so it doesn't get worse. So um, mom is coming to the rescue because I'm, if you've ever done personality types, my daughter's a, a one on the Enneagram and I'm a nine, which are <laughs> two. One's a racehorse, the other can be a slug. And um, as they say, um, so I'm trying to teach her some meditation, prayer, how to breathe <laughs> through all her stuff. So. But I would really appreciate prayers for the healing Absolutely. of the ulcer. Um, and she's got boards coming up in next week. So thank you. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Yeah. Just a side note with Wendy McLean, who just passed away. Um, back when my older kids were in youth group, she helped with our youth group for several years. Wow. She was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Lots, there, are, there are connections with this congregation, I think. So. Anybody else? Oh, okay. um, I work over at the Lisbon schools, and we have a teacher there who has a wife that has pretty severe breast cancer, and she just found out that it spread to her spine and her brain. Yeah, but um, they're doing, they're very chipper, happy people, and they're doing the best they can, but they gave her two weeks, five weeks ago. She's, yeah, and she's still on her feet and happy, and it's amazing, but they've been put through the ringer, but they're still chugging along. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and they just had a baby. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. She j is turning one in a month or so here, and I think that's a big reason why she's so happy. And yeah, yeah. Oh, so. Oh, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, definitely. Hear our prayer. Oh, yeah. Just, um, I almost hate to say prayers for because that's what we do all the time, but nevertheless, prayers um, for all those who are reeling and those dead from the shooting last night, for the systemic hatred and racism that we let go unchecked and um, the failure to pass gun laws to keep people safe and just for all those grieving and hurting and for us to find some ways to say more than that we pray although prayer is important to make things different um it's hard even it's hard even to we just hear this so much that it's hard to keep feeling the 
the shock that we should feel and finding ways to do something about it. But, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Thank you for that, Chris. I couldn't even come up with the words to include it because it felt like here we are again. And we'll be there again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm also praying for educators. Let's pray for educators <laughs> this last, uh, last eight days. Um, for some, not all, uh, students, families, um, and everybody in this season of transition. I, I, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of families for a lot of reasons that are in the season of transition. So um, individuals and families. So for all of those families as well. So I invite us to re remember that um, whether the people to our left or our right are aware of what's going on with us, um, God knows and God longs to walk with us through what we've got going on and to hold us through it and to see us through it. And as a sign of that, let us, uh, of our trust in that, let us uh, pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As Christ's disciples, let us offer our gifts to his ministry. join me in the prayer of dedication. Risen Savior, responding, responding to your love and grace, we offer our gifts of time, talent, service, and money. May our offerings feed the hungry, clothe the poor, quench the thirsty, and shelter the vulnerable. Amen. Our final hymn is number 291. Spirit. 
one of my favorite hymns. And none of the none of the words are changed. No. So, sing from hymnal, sing from the.
And here's the good news. That spirit is still moving. It's still moving, and it's still in us. So take a deep breath. It's there. Can you feel it? It's in us. It's in the people around us. It's the world out there ahead of us, like I say every week. It's accessible to us and wants to use us and fill us and move us and heal us and all the things. So trust it. Trust that the Spirit is there for you. And as you do that, remember that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power, yes, of that Spirit are in each of us, in the people near and far from us, in the world out there ahead of us this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.